Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. Today is April 29th. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Buckle up. We've got a lot of fun going on today. Biden's green energy price shock is the first story out of the block. Second story, Biden administration finalizes power plant rule. I think you're going to be surprised what happens here. Exxon, as in our third story, is working on uh, tech to remove CO2 from atmosphere, but at a breakthrough, it's going to need to slash costs. And then solar, uh, as solar capacity grows, some of America's most productive farmland is at risk. Who pays for the end of uh, life on the land reclamation? I always want to know a good about, good story on that one. China calls for international investigation to Nord Stream attack. There's some things hidden in this nugget. So let's get rolling. Biden's green energy price shock. This one, everybody is saying that uh, inflation is only 2 to 3%, needs to take a look at the cumulative effect of inflation and energy. And so when you take a look at this, um, the, near, the chart in this story shows that uh, the average change in electricity prices over the last decade, electric rates remain flat in the seven years before President Biden took office, rising 5%. Since January 2021, electricity prices have soared 29.4% and about 50% of that from overall inflation. Wow. So, you sit back and kind of take a look at we've had supply chain issues we've had bad energy policies coming in and the uh electricity prices have increased 13 times un faster under mr biden than across the previous seven years this is nuts you cannot have bad energy policies thinking that you're going to be able to solve an economy um, uh, decisions. You've got to have good, low-cost energy in order to get uh, out of um, inflation and get your GDP. Right now, Russia is beating the U.S. We came in, I believe, at 1.6% GDP growth. Uh, and now Russia is at 3.5, 3.6% GDP. It's pretty sad. So let's go to the next story here. This story is, is amazing in the sense that Biden ad administration finalizes power plant rule. This one, I've got several things for Ms. Producer uh, to bring up as I talk about these things. There are five key takeaways. I have to uh, take a look at this. The, the EPA has finalized its power plant rule, which it, uh, forces existing coal and new natural gas, gas plants to use technology that is either ne neither economic nor commercial to reduce carbon dioxide uh, uh, emissions uh, or to shutter. The EPA, number two, will define the requirements for existing natural gas plants later. The author of this story feels that it may most likely be after November election. Uh, this is to pacify the green movement. Don't kid yourself. Number three, since natural gas and coal supply about 60% of the U.S. electricity and back up intermittent weather-driven wind and solar units, the rule calls into question the survival and reliability of the electric grid. I kid you not, this is not good. If you're going to take out the coal plants in a very expedient manner, we cannot get the regulatory process um, done for nuclear fast enough this is a, a, re a recipe for disaster, and the only thing that's going to solve it is rolling blackouts or using even less energy. Tell that to the AI and the data center folks. 
the number four, the rule is drawn by uh, uh, bipartisan criticism for its potential impact on the grid, which groups are concerned with the importance of reliable and affordable electricity. The rule will increase electricity prices and decrease reliability and raise the potential for economic disruption in the United States. The author has all five of these key takeaways uh, wonderfully. Uh, the changes include uh, need to start capturing 90% of their carbon dioxide emissions by 2032 rather than 2030 as originally proposed. So what? They're still not going to be able to do it. Um, and, and as carbon capture and sequestration technology is neither commercially available nor economic, we're already deindustrializing the United States, uh, just like Germany. And Germany is now, um, the EU is gone. And, and so when you sit back and take a look at the GDP growth for the EU and the economic, people are going hungry. This is a significant issue in uh, pacification of the, the left or the greenies that are out there. I'm all about, let's save the environment. Let's save uh, the planet. Let's not pollute, but let's have a discussion on this. Let's also go in and hear fossil fuel plants that are not retrofitted with carbon capture systems must exit the grid by January, 2039, instead of January, 2040 as originally proposed. This is even more of an issue uh, because it, it's just not going to be there. They're making it fiscally uh, unsound for com uh, power plants to keep their power online and solar is not going to be there. Wind is not going to be there. Facilities that broke ground after the proposal came out last year and will run frequently must capture 90% of their emissions or prevent that amount from emissions in some other way or close down. This is absolutely frightening. Uh, Miss Producer, if you could bring up uh, the first video, and let's take a look at this video. The video is CO2 methane and generated around the world. I want to bring this up just from a standpoint as, as we kind of watch this video go around, we start, we're looking at Spain and you're seeing that you can even see the, this methane map and CO2 is picking up uh, uh, where the shipping and air and you take a look at China, holy smokes. That is where most of the population and pollution is happening right now is India and China. Miss Producer, can you go ahead and bring up the second video? The second video is a China coal power plant. And as I watch this, you take a look at the smog. This is one power plant. And we're going to go through some of these other numbers here in a sec. This is an eye opener for me. There's an article that just came out yesterday, and it says that China is now putting out more CO2 than the rest of the Western civilized, Western civilized countries combined, period. And so when you look at this video, as we're watching this video, you can understand why. Now, Ms. Producer, can you bring up the next global uh coal plants globally uh, slide. And you'll take a look at that slide. It is amazing. Take a look at all of the coal plants in the U.S. And then and, and, um, there's, uh, I have to take a look, there's 6,500 or so, and there's 2,000 some odd in the U.S. So um, thank you, Ms. Producer. Let's go to this other slide U.S. power uh, generation capacity under development with construction kickoff scheduling between 2024 and 2028. This graph really takes a good look at uh, in the southeast, southwest, and how the plants are all aligning out in the megawatt usage. I don't have time to go through it now, but it is in the article. 
take a look at it, and there is absolutely no way that we can get by without natural gas or coal. Now, if we just got rid of coal, I'm all in on getting rid of coal in an orderly fashion, but I did not know this. And Ms. Producer, in, can you bring up the natural gas plants of the U.S.? And of the natural gas plants in the U.S., I did not know how many were in uh, California. There, uh, there are a significant number of natural gas plants in California. This is huge. Now, there is a coal plant in uh, Nevada, and I'm looking up how much it, California is the largest energy importer in the U.S. They import coal electricity from Nevada. I'm trying to get the numbers of how much they import, but they do use coal as it's imported from Nevada. Pretty interesting information there. So when we take a look at the takeaways of the new EPA uh, regulatory issues going on right now, we take a look at natural gas, coal, and the whole mix. We need a balanced diet of power and we need a we need it all. Wind, solar, I don't care. But you're not going to regulate yourself into net zero. Cannot be done. What's going to happen? People are going to uh, have serious failing issues. So with that cheery note, let's go to the next story here. Exxon is working on tech to remove CO2 from atmosphere, but a breakthrough is needed to slash costs. Um, this is pretty funny. Darren Woods, uh, CEO, says the technology is unaffordable. Oh, kind of goes al along with the uh, previous story. Says the cost needs to come down to $100 per ton for the technology to scale globally and be a viable tool. Uh, I, I applaud him for this. Uh, this is a tough challenge uh, to break, and I'm not pretending we're going to be like the ones to solve it, Wood says, but I'm confident that we will give it our all, uh, applying our best ca um, capabilities. I applaud him for saying this. Here's another quote. Once we have a technology that goes to the right cost level, you'll be able to need global deployment at scale. I suspect the technology will be acquired for the future. Lower cost direct air capture will be different than what we've got today and require some of the technical capabilities that we have. I think it's fabulous. At least he's saying, let's look at energy tech. Let's take a step back and plan for the future. Hats off to uh, Mr. Wood over there at uh, Exxon. Well, let's go to the next one. As solar capacity grows, some of America's most productive farmland is at risk. Who pays for the end-of-life land of reclamation? This one is really driving me nuts. Uh, the picture on this one is, if you just look at the article, solar panel stand in uh, uh, Indiana, um, 445 acres near Wheatsfield, Indiana, are covered in solar panels and, re and related machinery. Uh, the Dunsbridge Solar Project is a subsidiary of Next Area Energy Resources, and it's the world's largest generator of renewable energy uh, and wind. Uh, da, 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 da. The company said it would renew it, it would review any remedial work that's needed at the end of its contract said it would review as per terms, but it does not say who is responsible. I can commit to say, I'm going to review at the end of the contract. Doesn't say who's responsible. Let's get your attorneys. If you're a landowner and you are a farm owner and you have a windmill or a solar panel, please reach out, a solar farm, please reach out to us I want to find out what's going on. I'm not finding very many signed contracts of land reclamation, very much like in the oil and gas space, which is uh, the abandoned uh, oil wells is an orphan well programs are getting better. And uh, shout out to RT and the Trevino Family Resources. 
uh, for bringing up some more things in uh, land reclamation uh, projects for uh, oil and gas. And uh, also, I'm excited to be involved in trying to look at land uh, reclamation for wind and solar. So pretty exciting stuff. Hang on for some more news on that coming around the corner. China, on our last story today, calls for international investigation in the Nord Stream attack. Um, China's deputy envoy to the UN has called for an international probe into the bombing of the Nord Stream uh, gas pipelines. Uh, this is a very interesting, especially since we had uh, Secretary Blinken meeting with President Xi uh, yesterday, uh, two days ago. This is actually very interesting because now China does not mince words. You can even go take a look at what plants they had in the meeting with Blinken. There's a lot of hidden undertones in the backdrop and in the poisonous plants that were on that table. They don't like him. And that was very evident if you take a look and you understand the Chinese methodology of subtle hints in meetings and it is there now let's take a look at Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 those were four pipelines three of the four were destroyed allegedly by the U.S. with help from Norway allegedly I don't know but boy Putin sure said why would I blow up my own pipeline I don't know he, he all he has to do is go flip a switch on the uh, generators on the turbines on the one end of it, and he could shut it down. So he doesn't really need to uh, turn it off. Now, why are they calling? Why is China calling for this now? This is important because this has been going on since it was blown up, since um, President Biden said there will be no Nord Stream. Uh, and then all of a sudden it happens. Was that uh, unbelievable? Funny story. I just had to just put it out here for you to take a look. If you have any insights on this, let us know. Thank you to all of our wonderful listeners. Thank you to everyone that is subscribing, liking. And if you are an energy expert, I want to talk to you on Conversations with Stu in energy. And I also, I want to give a shout out to Michael for his uh, deal spotlight episodes that are going on. They are phenomenal. Check out all of our deal uh, spotlights. I'm looking forward to working on some of the deal uh, spotlights that we have coming up and also uh, taking a look. Is this deal actually worth working on? And as I get more involved in the solar and the wind evaluations and uh, reclamation, it's going to be fun to say, is this a good deal at the end? Who's going to pay for it? With that, subscribe, like, check out our sub, uh, sub stack, and we will see you guys next time.